Hello, this is One Man Left, and before this league started, I came out with a video on Molten Strike of the Zenith Juggernaut. I made this uh, build because it, it has all the elements needed to make a really overpowered build. It takes several different broken number mechanics and multiplies them all together. Molten Strike of the Zenith is the highest damage effectiveness skill for attacks in the game by a factor of like three times over second place, which is regular Molten Strike. It does like 3,000% effectiveness per second, which most melee skills do like 200. Um, the problem is you need to wear a two-hander, so everyone hates it. But I made this video using Battle Mage's Cryoscaling on spell damage with Iron Will and the Iron Fortress Chest to get a lot of percent damage and use this really broken skill to just make a solid all-around character. Now, this video I did was like a league start simulation with about two days worth of gear. And I think the total budget of this was about six divines. But this six divine character was able to do like depth 600. Uh, pretty fine. It was like four mil single target with three additional strike targets. So it was like 16 mil AoE for, for Delve. Um, and it, it just, it leap slams insanely fast. It's, it's a good all-around character, tanky. But the thing is, oh, I don't have D&D on. The thing is, I ended up playing Hierophant. I played Archmage, Mjolnir, and Mana Forged. And I had a couple people play this build, but people asked me, how does this build scale? How does this do in the end game? And I told people that basically I think it will scale similar to Mjolnir, where with that similar level of investment in Mjolnir, you can get it to about those numbers. So I was expecting it to be like, Maybe a little tankier than Mjolnir, and maybe like 50 to 100 mil DPS endgame. I was wrong. Uh, because I finally decided to make the endgame POB, and it does way better numbers than I would have thought. Um, the tankiness is very high, but effective health is a pointless stat. The number that matters is Ellie Max hit. Um, the damage is pretty good. I know you're looking and saying, oh, that's Zenith fifth hit. That's not how that works. Don't worry. I've already factored that in. If I didn't, it would say over a billion, but I've already subtracted out the Zenith multiplier. Um, I am not using a single totem here. This is a fairly legitimate amount of damage, as you'll see in the demonstrations here. But um, as leagues go on, people start to trail off, quit, donate currency, and I don't like to take donated currency and put it toward my current build. It feels kind of like cheap, but the thing I like to do is take bogged currency and apply it to kind of side projects that I would not have otherwise tested due to financial constraints. Well, this character, I took about 500 div of my, my divines, and I had about three and a half mirrors donated. So this is about a 4, 4.1, 4.2 mirror character. I'll show some of the item prices later. Um, so this isn't like armor stacker budget, but this is a very expensive character, and uh, this is to show off what the build can do endgame. I'll, I'll just get right into it. So I'm level 99 here. I don't have an omen in my bag. Uh, I figure, you know, why level and then do the demonstrations when I could just get XP doing the demos, you know? So I'll do, uh, I'll do an Uber Eater here. The build does pretty good damage, as we'll hopefully see here. Sometimes he's kind of janky and he'll, like, port away, but... But uh, he should die in about three seconds here. Two, one, go. That beam did a lot of damage. Okay, well that did more damage than I thought on the beam. But um, the way the skill works is you basically do 12 times damage with double the projectile. So it's like times 20 every fifth attack. Now with Awakened Multi-Strike, that also makes it kind of every 20 attacks per proc. So you need to be able to get to a very high attack speed. So with my attack speed is every two seconds with multi-strike. I get a little bit more with Blood Rage and Frenzy charges, which I didn't have on that guy. But high attack speed kind of smooth things out. So with accuracy stacking on Jug, you get really high attack speed. I'm scaling strength to get more. And that's kind of how you get around the clunkiness of it. So I'm going to do some delve here. I'm at 3.3k. And these aren't like cupcake zones. Uh, this guy will maybe kill me. Because he's like a 5 damage mod Argus at 3.3k. So, uh, I figure, why don't I just level up in Delve, you know? Pen zones are a little rough right now, but 
I'm not too worried about 3.3k regular nodes. These should go pretty easy. I was doing some Delve at 3.2 earlier, and even testing stuff and not having like nearly the complete character, like missing some items still, I was I was pretty consistently oh my. Maybe I shouldn't talk trash yet. That D-Gen. That cold D-Gen from 20 spiders dying at the same time. But, uh, I, I had streaks of, like, 20 depth. Where I just never went below, like, 80% for 20 depth. So, now, granted, part of that's the effect of Jug, where, like, you know, you kind of don't take damage till you do. But, um, I'm, I'm confident enough to try this. So, I got XP at 99. Trying to show off the tank demo on some fairly modded zones here. And they're actually kind of tanky. It's 63 monster life, I guess. Yeah, it's monster life. Alright. We'll see if I can level up and then die to this Argus. Most likely, I will not level up and die to the Argus, but I have an Ahotalti here for my boss demo. We'll, uh, we'll grind that out. For the record, I did not fully trash talk this Argus. I, I, there is a very, very good chance he will kill me. Uh, I will pay him full respect. I, let it be known I did not go in talking trash. He is a 5 damage mod 3.3k Argus. He will do terrible, terrible things to me. Get my flares. Yeah, I don't... What am I? 1.5 mil to go. Yeah, so this guy's gonna kill me. But <laughs> if he doesn't... Well, then I'll level up. Easy game. Because I don't think the Ahotalti's gonna kill me. This will probably be the hardest hitting monster I've seen in a week. I've seen a couple Arguses, Ar Argi, Genixes, that were not quite this mod, but maybe three damage mod. But like, I think th I think this is the hardest one. He's also added fire, which means he's the same damage type added as his main damage type. So that means he will do a lot of damage to me. I'm gonna try to respect him a little bit. Okay, I respected him, and I took an enraged melee hit. Alright. Easy game. That That's a clear indicated face tank of a 5 damage mod Argus. It would have been lame if I just kited him and didn't get hit. The, the, I, I, think, I think the fact that I took an enraged hit is more legitimizing, you know? Anyone can kite. It takes a special type of idiot to face tank. And I have a character with 97 intellect and 3k strength, so I might just be that special kind of idiot. Oh, I have the all monsters are immune mob. Alright, just gonna log here. The all monsters are immune arch nemesis mod. You don't really notice in normal gameplay because it doesn't have enough health. But in Delve, it's super annoying. Alright. I've got... Ahot what is that path? Okay, well, I guess we're just doing the Ahotalti. And going into some tier 17 maps after this. Um, this is... What? Frenzy? Double extra Ellie? Yeah, he's Frenzy and Pale with 212 extra Ellie. So not free, but I should win this one pretty easy. For, for the record, I was much, much, much more scared of the Argus... Than I was of this Ahotalti. So I am I am mostly confident against this guy. His his fizz degen thing does a little bit of menacing damage, but I have pretty good HP pool and fizz reduction. So I should be alright. But uh we'll see. Phased. 
My P uh, my P one's a little tame because I don't have anything like going, but I'm gonna go for kind of a speed kill in P two. I'm gonna try to get like a two second kill. His P two sh I don't have calling strike. His P two should be one point one billion, like one point oh seven three whatever. So a th even a three second kill would be pretty good. Like somewhere between two and four is the goal here. And then I'll show you a T-17 demo, and then I have a surprise at the end that's uh, the hardest thing I'll do in this demo. The Genix, this Ahutalti, not the hardest thing I've done. It, that's yet to come. Alright. No. No. It's failed. Alright, I screwed up the burn. I screwed that up big time. I, uh, I went for, like, the pre-Zenith where I was gonna, like, have a proc go off right as he became, uh, uh, vulnerable. And it went off right before he came out, and then I had to kite and screwed it up. So, I screwed that up, but I'll do a T-17 demo, and then the hardest demo of the video is going to be at the end. So, okay, if you're not familiar with Deep Delve, you might see that and be like, oh, man, it looks like this build's struggling. But you might not realize that, like, the difference in numbers between Deep Delve and, like, Tier 17s is astronomical. Like, this is such a joke compared to Deep Delve. This is an unrerolled map. It's not the hardest mods, but, like, these are all the initial six mods that don't get rerolled. So, they're, they're, all six of them are Tier 17 mods. It was not Chaos Orbed into Tier 16 mods, because if you Chaos Orb them... You only get uh, two tier 17 mods and one, or uh, and four tier 16 mods. So I'll just do a tier 17 demo here, and it's numerically it's just not challenging. Like it just doesn't do any damage. It stuff doesn't have any HP. But I don't know. I, for for people that don't understand like the delve reference, this might be something they can relate to more. So it's probably still good to include. Um, I kind of want to hit 100 in the Valdos map. I, ha I haven't moused over it yet, but if you guys aren't, if you guys know, don't know what the Valdos map is, the Valdos map is harder than the Delve demo. It is a 40 divine margin Valdos map with 100% um, Delirious, Union of Souls, 90% damage reduction. There's 100. Dang, I didn't hit in the map. Union of Souls, 90% 90 reduction. Um, unst uh, instability that explodes, whatever. Uh, I'll show you. It's a 40 div margin map, which is absurd. There's even very few um, Mage Blood maps that are 40 div margin. But Progenesis right now are about 60 div. And I just bought this before this video about 20 minutes ago, whatever, 30, for like 20 div. Um, but you'll, when you see the mods, you'll see why. It's, it's, it's understa- Okay, I just made a gigantic loop, didn't I? We're, alright, well, let's, we're gonna show off the leap slam speed. You guys want to, you, you, you want leap slam speed? We got leap slam speed. It's gotta be this way, right? There, okay, I was that close to seeing the boss. That's lame. Alright. He's gonna Zenith proc and die. Oh, he lived a Zenith proc. With 118% more life, he actually lives a Zenith proc. That's crazy. Alright. So, what I'm gonna end on is a very, very insane map. This, this map for reference, I just bought. It was listed for four hours. So it's not like I sniped this, like, oh my god, this map is so worthless. It, it was up for four hours. Feared, 100% delirium, 90% damage reduction, instability, um, one player in area, union of souls. And progenesis is 60 divines. So this is a nasty piece of work for a uh, Valdo's map. But I'm pretty confident on this one. I was actually hoping I would have XP for this one. Because I, I don't think this one can kill me. But we'll see. Uh, oh yeah, let's... Now that I'm 100, I can do this. 
There you go. 11.2k life. 28.62 strength. Alright. Let's do the Valdos map. This is going to take a little while. Because it's... Um, just for some math, if you don't know how Union of Souls works. Union of Souls gives 30% increased life per monster killed. The core map, I've done one of those maps with the Atlas that counts the, the monsters killed. And it's 1,650 monsters. So 1650 times 0.3 means by the end of the map, the magic monsters will have 495 times health. So like a Disgust is the highest base HP of the Delirium monsters, and those have 686k base HP. Now, oh, I screwed that up. It's 495 times 686,000. So just from Union of Souls, their base HP is 300 million. But with uh, Delirium, they take 96% reduced damage, so it's times 25. And then with 90% um, damage reduction from my 9 equipped items, um, it's times 10. So the Disgust will have 85 billion HP by the end of the map. That is a lot more than a Deep Delve monster. I mean, I'm actually going to go Ancestral Call for this too, because there's going to be a lot of monsters up. But it might not be the fastest map, but I should win. It is not... Okay, the, the good news here is it's not Ghosted Feared. I would not say I'm 100% confident if the Feared was uh, Ghosted. But because it's non-Ghosted Feared, it's pretty hard to lose. But it, it's just... The things are going to be tanky. Like... For reference, an Uber Boss... Oh, there's Feared. I'm laggy. Oh my god. Oh, Ancestral Call is just lagging me so bad. For reference, uh, an uber boss has 250 million HP when you factor in their damage re reduction. I probably- oh, I got teleport- I probably shouldn't do Ancestral Call. I- I shouldn't do Ancestral Call. It's lagging me. It's lagging me so bad. It's double strike targets. That's double the Molten Strike projectiles. It's gonna lag me out. Yeah, I need to drop Ancestral Call. It's probably gonna kill me from lag here. I- I probably gotta go back to Volatility. It, yeah, it's so bad. Oh, God, this is bad. All right, if I get a, like, stopping point here where there's a bit of downtime, I will swap it out. Volatility, Ancestral Call. All right, there we go. Yeah, it... On paper, the Ancestral Call is much better damage than this. Oh, that Omni almost got one shot, Jesus. But, like, it's just... It's just the lag I can't handle. This guy's gonna be really bad to single target down. I need him near some other targets. Alright, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll clear more of the rest of the map. But, it's, it's gonna be ZDPS. Like, it... If, a, if an uber boss has 250 million HP, that means those disgusts with 85 billion will be 330, is my math right there? 340 uber pinnacle bosses of HP. The disgusts are the big guys here. You see the big fat guys? Disgust? That, that's, what that, that's what they are. Their HP is going to increase for the remainder of the map. Um, it's probably only like 20% ramped right now. It's going to get about five times higher. And I don't have Ancestral Call to like double my damage, so, because of the lag. So, that would speed things up a little bit. Look how slow they're going down though now. It's going to get so slow. If you've seen enough for the video, thanks for watching. I'm going to be doing this for about another 12 minutes. Depends what kind of uh, viewer you are. You've, you've pretty much seen it all. I'll, I'll give you the hint. It, it's, they're only going to get tankier. But hey, remember. This is for 40 div. So even if this map takes 15 minutes, that's 160 div an hour. Get your fub gun strats out of here. 100 div an hour. Pfft. Dude, they're getting so tanky, Jesus.
If I could use... A, yeah, if I had Ancestral Call, this would be easier. I suppose I could talk about more mechanics of the build, because I got nothing but time right now. So, as I maybe alluded to earlier, I have a video of this in the lower levels. Um... I'll, I'll, re I'll go over the mechanics again, just in case you haven't seen that video, but the, the way those build scales is you're stacking strength, right? So if you see right here, I have 2862 strength. Well, then I'm using the Iron Fortress chest piece, which makes it so basically your strength contribution is 50% more. So instead of 2% per 10, it's 3% per 10. Well, that means that affects Iron Will. So since I'm taking Iron Will, I'm turning all that strength into spell damage, and then I'm getting that multiplier times 1.5. So that actually means my current spell damage is about 800%. That's pretty good. But Battle Mage's Cry on the weapon swap with Red Blade Banner makes that 800% into a base 150. So it's 1200%. But okay, we're not done yet. Because it gets scaled by Warcry buff effect. And Warcry buff effect, I have about 60 of. I could get more. But that makes that 1200% into about 2000%. So 2000% increased damage from Battle Mage's Cry. Whereas your average endgame build is running around with maybe 500% increase. Uh, means the damage is pretty good. So, if you want to build that does good damage, you kind of need to have really good percents and really good flat. And I'm getting really good percent from the Battle Mage's Cry. But as far as the uh, the flat, I'm getting it from a couple things. I'm getting it from Red Blade, or uh, from uh, Replica Alberons. And then my weapon, which is right now the synth mod for fire damage per strength. Alright, I might have to move on from these guys, holy cow. Fire damage per strength. Um, there's both a Shaper mod you can get with that, and then and a Synth mod, but I... Whether you get it from Influenced or Synth, the, um, damage per strength is just a nice damage boost to go, to pair with the Alberons. They're pretty comparable in how much they give. Um, so, like, okay, there's Elder. There's Shaper. Where's it Ziri? I need to find a Ziri. There's Sh Shaper's at, like, 70. Oh, there's Aziri. Oh, she is full. Holy cow. Holy cow. I don't think I can tank the Double Vile Flame Blast. Maybe with a Mortal Call I can. I'll try it. I don't think this map can kill me otherwise. That'd be the only thing in the map that can kill me is Double Vile Flame Blast. I'll try it. Hey, stay near Shaper. No, okay. A double vol kills me. I I could very easily do this whole map deathless. But I just wanted to know if I can tank the double vol on Delirious. Uh, I could probably tank single. And I just tanked like 20 storm calls. So it, it's probably close. It might be within roll range. I don't... I. I, I think she's got me by, like, 20%. Shaper's getting wrecked right now. Holy Val Storm calls. Okay. Another mechanic here that you'll maybe uh, witness is I have really high recovery. Oh, I can't tank two. I I tried to I tried to leap slam intentionally to tank one, and I got stuck on like a thing on the floor. Uh, that stopped my leap slam from getting into the one. And I got hit by the double. I wanna I wanna see what one does to me for damage. I'm kind of curious. But obviously, if I was dodging those, this would be an easy one portal map. Because there's not much else in the map that can kill me. Wait, where's Aziri? Oh. She's about to storm call a lot. I'll try to not throw. Now that I've limited... See, regular flame blast only did like 40%. 
My, maybe not even. I, I what, what did I go to there? Like 70? Oh, Synthate's over here alone, isn't he? Yeah, this is gonna be a ZDPS battle here. Oh, that's not that bad. Can I tank this? Limit testing. Alright, Synthate can't kill me. It, it's really just Aziri Double Vol Flame Blast. The downside to this guy is he gets a tank buff. And, um, oh, that does no damage. He, he, does, he gets a tank buff where he takes like 90% reduced damage um, during that channel. So he just, he goes from like taking some damage to absolutely none. During, during this, he takes 90% reduced damage. It's either 80 or 90, it's really high. Then he has the big nuke, but it doesn't do enough to kill me. There you go. Alright, feared down. So, if you're still here, the rest of the map, now that feared is dead, is uh, me killing ever-increasing health Union of Souls monsters. And I'm only about half done. So, if you've seen enough, I'm gonna finish the map, but... I, I thought I'd just show off, like, a pretty difficult Valdos. That's a 40 divine margin. Just because, like, I think that's a pretty good non-delve benchmark of really difficult content. Really, hard Valdos are just about the only thing outside of Deep Delve that are difficult. There's a couple Tier 17 things that can, like, kill me, maybe. But it's not because they're numerically difficult. It's because of the, the mods. Like, you know, if, if you're a really, really good build, for example... And you do a tier, a tier 17 map that has removed 10% of life on hit. And you just get hit by a bunch of monsters that otherwise would do zero damage to you. Well, you die. So, like, that's an instance of something that, like, could kill, kill you in a tier 17 mod map if you did the worst possible mods. When the reality is, it's not because they're challenging. It's just that the mod is prohibitive. But the thing is, now you can just roll over those mods, so it doesn't really matter as much, but... This is, this is what I was talking about with the monsters getting to 80 billion health. I'm gonna, technically I don't need to kill all of them, but I need to kill all the rares. I need to kill every rare. This is gonna be like a 19 minute map. This is gonna be ridiculously bad. Do not watch this. I had, I had to have this data point just for, I had to. It is, it is literally this the rest of the video. Just, just move on. Did I just get feared? Is that the delirium fear? But yeah, oh yeah, I, as I was saying on the Azir earlier too, um, I have really high recovery, and it's not from actually leech or instant leech or any of the typical things to get high recovery. It's not from untiring, it's not from any type of recover on hit. My recovery for this build is life gain on hit. I have a Watcher's Eye with the Vitality mod that's giving me right now 28 life gain on hit. And that pretty much makes me immortal. Because I'm just doing that many hits. And if I was able to not lag out from Ancestral Call, I could do double the number of hits. But it's a good mod for tankiness because it gives you pretty much infinite recovery on any content where you're able to attack like Delve and Valdos, which is coincidentally the two hardest things. Um, you know, there's easier content like Ubers where you're not able to attack during their intermissions, but like you don't really need it on that type of content as much. Um, but yeah, being able to have infinite recovery when you're able to attack is just... Really, really powerful for the only two things that are really, truly difficult in this game. Um, you could do something like a mirror sword, maybe. I, I'll go over a couple of the items in the crafting at the end of this. So maybe I'll timestamp this if someone wants to skip to the end and just see the, the crafting purely. I will also probably not get the reward from this because I've probably got a missing rare somewhere that I have to kill. So it's not going to give me the box right away. I'll maybe go... Well... I could go over some crafting stuff after I get this guy down. And then play Where's Valdo and hunt down the remaining monsters, but... The funny thing is, the Malachi is just regular scaling, so he's just got 98% damage reduction. 
And on tier 17, his his base health is only like 6 mil. So he's just like a 300 mil HP Malachi. Which is like way easier than everything else in this map by far. I can take this, right? Did like 200 damage. Well, that was a lot of damage. I'm probably not gonna get the box here. No, I didn't. I've got I've got rares missing. I'll look for a bit, and then if I have a tough time finding them, I will maybe pause and do some talking here. If you're still watching. Um if you guys don't know on Valdo's maps, look how slow they're going down, though. Jesus. Look how slow they are going down. If you guys don't know on Valdo's maps, um, you have to clear every unique monster, every rare monster, and then finally you have to kill 90% of magic and white monsters. Which means I will either be missing magic and white kills, or I'm missing one rare. So even though I've killed all the bosses and I've, killed, I've cleared most of the map, I'm just going to have a bunch of random... Monsters like this that are just hanging out at like 10% HP that I need to kill That are stopping me from getting my progenesis Dang didn't I trash talk 100 div an hour? That means if I don't kill this in like 25 minutes <laughs> This was maybe not a good length of map for uh For good like video content in hindsight Oh, there's a uh, exile. Oh Oh, I was just missing the exit. Oh, uh, what, I, what was I talking about? No, easy. Progenesis. Easy. So I was... Okay, I told you I was probably missing a rare. And I forget that rogue exiles count as uniques. So if you're missing some random rogue exile, that will stop you from getting your reward. But Alright, there we go. That was like 17 minutes, and I made 40 divines. So, cool. But, alright, brief mechanics check. So like I said, I'm getting all my recovery... From life gain on hit from vitality. I have iron will with battle mage's cry. My battle mage's cry is on my weapon swap with this claw and red blade. It is using call to arms which makes it instant. So if you look here I will swap call to arms swap and then I have an 11 second buff. If you don't want a weapon swap that's fine. You could run the gems in your front sockets because I could drop some gems here. It's doable. Um, there are people that just hate the weapon swap, that's fine. You won't guarantee 30 power, but if you're surrounded by monsters, you get 30 power. If you take the Warcry Mastery for 10 minimum power, you're at, you're at one third power guaranteed. And if you're near a unique monster, you get 20 power guaranteed. If you're near a rare monster, you get 10 power guaranteed. So, it's pretty easy to get to 30 power, but like, worst case is, you'll be at 10 or 20, and it's out of 30. So, you'll be doing, if you hate swapping, like half damage roughly if you do that but when you're surrounded you'll be doing full damage and when you're on bosses you'll be doing two-thirds damage but um this setup right now is original sin so i'm going for chaos this weapon actually isn't that hard to craft because i pretty much just essenced and then veiled orb the prefixes and then i did reforge attack for the attack speed after that i have four attack mods so if i just craft cannot roll attack modifiers and then just sit there at the bench and a null exalt i can guarantee strength that's what i did then I got Strength, then I got the Double Damage Focus mod. Um, I went for Sort Gloves because my glove implicit, my glove prefixes, I can't really do anything with. So I decided that if I'm going to go for like a pair of Titan Gauntlets with double armor versus a Sort Pair with double ES, do I really want 400 or 500 more armor that's going to make almost no difference in the grand scheme of things? Or do I want what amounts to be about 330 Energy Shield for Divine Shield? This is way better because when I'm surrounded by monsters... I pretty much am always at full energy shield. If you see that clip back there with the Valdo's map, my ES is ping-ponging between every hit. I am I am recouping 10,000 ES per second. That affects dots. Every game tick, I'm getting my full 364 energy shield. So this is pretty much like old Arctic Armor, where it just removes 364 damage from every hit. So this makes me incredibly tanky. Hits that get removed, that 364 damage, do not trigger a degen from Progenesis. Um, it's just a good defensive layer, and I think it's much more impactful than the armor. I know some people are going to play, like, the crit version with Oscar Arm and, like, a Banishing Blade for non-original Sin. I'll post a POB of that as well. 
because this is like I said is a four mirror version. I already made a video that's like a six divine version. I will post in the P in the description of this video something in the middle that's like 300 div. That's probably going to be like 100 mil DPS, like 50 to 100 mil, and like pretty tanky. Because I know a lot of people want a middle ground. I just wanted to take this video to show like what the extreme is. Um, but yeah, this is like four meters of gear. I don't have any one passive voices, which I know is like, oh yeah, roll your eyes. But like for end game builds, it's not that I don't have one passive voices to use for this. Uh, but this large cluster jewel is actually like better than one passive voices. I've POB'd this and it actually is tied. It's a little bit less defense and a little bit more damage than a one passive voices. And this costs like six divines. But because um, like this is such a powerful uh, node, it gives 20 strength and 20 attack speed. But it requires you using a two-hander, which everyone hates. And it requires you to have 600 strength, which a lot of people don't. So because this is such a broken keysta, or because it's such a broken notable, it actually makes these like tied with one passive voices, which is ridiculous. There's almost no build in the game that has regular larges that can compete with one passive voices that are adorned. Um, I think that'll wrap it up. I'll try to include a bunch of info in the description. I made this build because I wanted there to be maybe another option for like deep delve mana forge. There's a chance Mana Forge gets nerfed because it's so dominant right now for, like, deep delve and endgame content. And I wanted to make this video, this build, with nerfs in mind. Because I don't think anything in this, besides things that are replaceable, is going to get nerfed. Like, okay, Adorn might get nerfed. I'll just use small cluster jewels with life, strength, all attributes, and I'll get similar stats. They're just harder to craft, sure. Okay, Nimbus might get nerfed. Yeah, that's going to affect like 40% of builds on the ladder. But I'll just use a helical ring with accuracy, strength, and I'll, I'll take the damage nerf. That's fine. Everyone's going to get a nerf from that. Everything else, Molten Strike of the Zenith is 0.1% play rate. There's just no way they get, th that this gets nerfed. Even if they nerf Weapon Swap Battle Mage's Cry, I'll just run it on the front gem links, and then we're fine. With Call to Arms, so it's fully automated then. That's actually probably more comfortable to play. But th the intent of this build was to make something that could just wipe its ass with 6k delve. That has very little risk of being nerfed. So I'll leave you guys at that. Maybe this will be the go-to all-arounder, kill everything, Gigas Machatus next league. We'll wait for patch notes and see. I'll catch you next time.